great to be with you and I wanted to start off by just passing on a sincere thank you to each and everybody that has actually clicked on and viewed one of the videos we have posted. It's humbling to not only just to see the growth of the channel but to actually read the comments and to read the personal stories of what each and everybody has actually gone through with respect to the heart. But sometimes just putting something into a bit of simple language, trying to make it easy to understand, to comprehend. Now, not everything is going to be relevant to each and everybody that watches uh, the channel. When there is a need, uh, when something comes up, when you have to have a test, when you have been told you've got some issue going on, then that's really where we start searching online to get some answers, to get some information. And the, the comments, the feedback has been immensely humbling. So just a big thank you to each and everybody that has supported the channel, that has shared information, that has provided your personal story about how you have been impacted by a heart condition and that this channel has given you, you know, some sense of peace and comfort to know what's going on. The stent video that we posted well, several months ago now has, again, surpassed my expectations. Just went out there purely to provide you with my experience um, in managing patients with blockages in the arteries and using stents. And we've had more than half a million views on this video, more than 400 comments. And today I wanted to go a little deeper into these comments. Uh, Dr. Logic made a comment about uh, having had a bare metal stent implanted 19 years ago before the new stents uh, were, uh, were around. And Dr. Logic, you're still kicking, never had any chest pains, and, you know, can't ask for more. And, you know, what can I say? That's an amazing result. And we know that the bare metal stents were the first generation stents that we started implanting. We're not putting them in in a lot of patients nowadays, but again, there are procedural factors that where you put a stent in sized appropriately to fit the artery, the results are long lasting, irrespective of whether you use the old generation stent or the new generation stents. So if you look after the stents, and that's paramount, putting the stent in is the easy fix to open up the blockage but it's a matter of stopping the blockage from coming back again. Focusing on the things that we keep on talking about, blood pressure, getting the blood cholesterol levels down. And we'll have a separate topic on cholesterol and statins. That's a commonly requested topic. Very much under a lot of debate, people have very strong views about statins and what are the benefits, but there's no doubt there is evidence that if you are on a statin and you have stents, you reduce the chances of complications developing both inside the stent but also inside the other parts of the artery. They might have a little bit of cholesterol and we're mindful of not, that not getting any worse. And there's a lot of thank yous. Todd Sween, thank you very much for the clarification. I had my first dent back in uh, 2010 and then bypass and a valve replacement. It's, it's amazing to sort of hear you know, Todd's personal story of what he's gone through um, with obviously complications with respect to the heart and medication that he's been on. And you're doing amazing, Todd. So keep up the great work. And as I said, the majority of people who do have stents live a very normal, active and great life. And that's what the aim of your doctor should be, to, to use the knowledge and the experience to ensure that you as a patient can fulfill all your dreams, all your aspirations and not be limited by the heart condition. Bill Bill Collins had a heart attack three years ago, four stents inserted. That's a common question as well. How many stents are too many stents? Well, it's not so much the number of stents. Sure, the number of stents is one consideration. But sometimes, if I give you an example, if there's an artery that has quite a few windy and bendy parts and sections to it, it can sometimes be challenging to pass a very long stent to treat a long blockage. So if you have a 30 millimeter or three centimeter stent, that may not be easy to get down the bottom of the artery to where it needs to go. So in that situation, we may elect to use shorter stents or two or even three shorter stents. So 
the total stent length that we use is still the same, around three centimeters, but we may do it using shorter stents because the shorter ones are a little easier to deliver in certain parts of the artery. So don't get too confused about, oh, look, I've got so many stents. Of course, you know, the more stents we have, we equate to having a little bit more hardware, more metal in the arteries. So again, a bit more care that we often take. And there may be considerations to use things like blood thinning tablets for a little longer than usual. We've had a video on clopidogrel, uh, one of the blood thinners that we use, or one of the, I shouldn't say blood thinners, one of the agents that prevent clots, the anti-clot medications, aspirin and clopidogrel, we often use, say, for about a year or so after stents. But in some situations, depending on where the stents have been placed, in which particular parts of the artery, and how have they been placed, you might hear of branch points, where there's two sections of an artery that come off side by side, and we've got to reconstruct that if there's a blockage in there, then sometimes we need to use a little bit of a longer duration of blood thinning medication. So the number of stents has a bearing on how we manage things into the future in terms of the blood thinning medication, but nothing changes in terms of keeping things under control, stopping smoking. I mean, smoking is an important one. Nicotine and all the compounds in, in cigarettes do have a bearing, do increase the risk of cholesterol plaque forming inside stents. That's right, you heard me. Not only that cholesterol builds up inside our arteries, but also once we put a stent in, if we don't look after the blood flow and prevent smoking and, uh, and control diabetes, then there is a chance that cholesterol can grow inside the stents and that can cause more problems. Anthony Vasquez, I learned about stents the hard way in July 2019. I dropped dead from a full cardiac arrest and he ended up having a Widowmaker blockage. Now the Widowmaker blockage, and, and look, Anthony, amazing, you survived that and you know, you're doing well. The Widowmaker, we typically equate as a blockage that occurs rather suddenly in the main artery of the heart and that's usually the one that goes to the front of the heart and there are three main arteries, two on the left side and one on the right. Well, the one towards the front from the left main coronary artery that goes down all the way to the front called the left anterior descending artery, well, you might have heard it termed as the Widowmaker artery because a blockage in that is significant because that artery carries about two thirds of the blood flow to our heart. It's a large artery, it's an important artery that supplies one of the more important parts of the heart muscle around the left side of the heart, the left ventricle. So it is an important artery. Don Rad, I got three stents about three months ago. Arteries were blocked, but the heart was good and strong. Luckily, I'll be living strong and healthy. And um, again, talking about lifestyle, you're absolutely right, uh, Don. Losing weight, improving physical activity. You're, you're back to swimming, you're gardening, you're doing that's fantastic. Amazing, amazing. I mean, that's what we want. Having a stent is not the end of life it's the beginning of life it's a new lease of life it's 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 a way to actually improve your symptoms and of course if you have a heart attack well it saves your life um, and you speak a bit a little bit about you know the hospital bill and the insurance I mean again there is so much variation around the world I'm based in Australia where we are fortunate to have public health system there is obviously private insurance as well but there are other systems whereby we might not be as fortunate managing an acute blockage or a heart attack is a life-threatening it's an emergency irrespective of what whether you have insurance or not I would expect that you would get the attention and that attention would be either to have a, a clot busting drug to open up the blood flow if, the, if there is a blockage or to have a procedure called an angioplasty and a stent placed. That is an emergency that is treated as an emergency wherever you are. Ashish and Schumann, thank you. It's such an informative educational video. Really appreciate the wholesome explanation. Ashish, you go through, your, your grandmother had three stents placed. Jerry, you've got a lovely uh, UK flag. I had the pleasure of training in the, in the United Kingdom in London at the Royal Brompton Hospital. So um, it's great to hear from you. You had two stents fitted back in 2019 after a heart attack. Fingers crossed, everything has been fine since. Great video. Look, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. And as I said, having the stenting doesn't change 
things in terms of life. We want you to be active, leading life. Sure, there are some small things that we need to be focusing on, monitoring, being on medication. But, you know, life goes on healthy, fit and strong. Edwin, great video. Peter got my first stint three days ago. Well, and that's a common, common theme that I've seen with people commenting when we've had a stint or where we've had a heart scare and uh, where we often go to the internet, to the web, to look for information. And my video, having a small part to play and to give people uh, like Edwin some reassurance and some information, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. John Sinclair, thanks for the informative video. My wife had six stents over a six-month period 11 years ago and is now better than ever. Thanks for all your research and progress you have made and you've passed your 50th anniversary. John, phenomenal. That is amazing. Thank you to all your colleagues and technicians. Well, you're right. I mean, um, it's not only the doctors and the, you know, the cardiologists. It's, it's the people who are often behind the scenes. It's the nursing staff, the sonographers, the, the cardiac technologists, the radiographers, the researchers, the students that we have, the trainees, the junior doctors, the nurses, the physiotherapists that are critical, the occupational therapists. These are uh, critical people that are involved in the rehabilitation, the nutritionists, the dietitians, And it's a whole team of people that are passionate to make improvements, to make inroads into tackling this condition, this disease, that unfortunately still costs a lot of lives in our community and causes a lot of suffering. A, a big thank you, John, and, and great to, to get your feedback. Christopher Jones, what an absolutely brilliant description of the deployment of stents. You had a great team at Southampton General Hospital. Well, yes, I know I have colleagues in Southampton, so well done, Christopher. You had an attack and then... Um, 20 years ago, and then you had uh, surgery. Look, again, it's a common theme. Stents are only one part of the jigsaw puzzle. They're obviously, again, medications that are important, but surgery and bypass surgery is another way to tackle blockages. Stents are not the answer for, for many people, particularly if there are multiple blockages, multiple arteries, the presence of diabetes. Then sometimes putting stents in these cases is not is not optimal. Mike Keeper, Mike, people like you are so wonderful and stents saved my life. I just wanted to say thank you for all the work and the research you do. Um, Mike, what can I say? Uh, it, it's not because of me and people like me. It's, it's the people like you and the patients that experience what is a frightening condition, what is absolutely scary. And um, you also allow us to undertake research studies to learn about new therapies, to learn about new medications and new stents. You know, and I've been blessed to, to run an active research program uh, and it's patients like you that actually volunteer your time to be involved in our research where we can learn more, we can innovate, we can make things better for future generations. So thank you very much, Mike. Mary Ann uh, Gunter, Mary Ann, I had a sudden heart attack 18 months ago with very little warning. My risk factors are high blood pressure, family history, and about 25 pounds overweight. I have researched impact of stress as a cause of heart attacks and convinced that this is the main issue. Look, and you're a non smoker, and I get it. Again, uh, we know in females the condition may present rather differently, it doesn't present often as the classical chest pain here and going up into the jaw and it can present rather vaguely, rather non-specifically. And stress, I believe, is an important factor. Stress is linked to many things. Stress, anxiety, psychological stress, depression. All these factors have a bearing on our body, have a bearing on our hormones, have a bearing on our stress hormones, increase blood pressure, and that itself has a major bearing on our heart and the wrist. So you're absolutely right, Marianne. Stress is an important consideration. It is sometimes difficult to, you know, to control. And I get it. We are stressed. Life is, is very, very difficult, particularly when you look at what we've been through in the last few years around the globe. Life is stressful. Family stresses, children, partners, relationships, you know, work. And it's often sometimes associated with a more risk-taking behavior, 
more smoking. And again, using smoking as a way to try to relieve some of that stress. I get it. You know, I, I don't uh, fault my patients and I understand and I sincerely empathize with patients who do smoke, for example. And I can see it sometimes being used as a form of stress relief. But again, these are important considerations that you have to work with your treating team to look at how do we address that? How do we minimize, mitigate stress? How do we control things like blood pressure? Control what we can control. Control the smoking. Control the blood glucose and the sugar levels. Control the blood pressure. Stay on the medications. Medications can have side effects, but they are proven to reduce your chances of having further complications. Andy Alvia, Andy had stents in 1999, 2011, 2015, in a latest procedure, the 1st of April 2022, which opened the oldest stent due to plaque buildup. I stopped smoking in 2009 after 37 years of lighting up. Stents are amazing. Well, if we can avoid putting the stent in, in the first place, that's what we want to do. But when there is a need, of course, stents have a major, major role to play. We've had a video on some of the complications associated with stents, and there is this entity called neoatherosclerosis, where cholesterol builds up again inside old stents. We know that smoking increases the risk of that happening. We know that if, if there's a problem with the kidneys, kidney failure, that also increases the risk. Uh, diabetes increases the risk. And what sometimes protects you, and there is some data that we've found, is that being on certain types of heart medications, a broad category B ACE inhibitors or angiotensin II receptor blockers, and they are commonly used medications that we use for blood pressure and also to improve the strength of the heart. But they've also there has been some evidence to look at these medications helping to reduce the plaque buildup inside old stents. James Gregg, you gave me a sense of calm about having had three stents inserted one year ago. It's not that I've worried, but I've always left somewhat curious. I'm told my doctor is a true magician, a top-notch professor, but you do worry about that which you have no real knowledge of. You've set my mind at ease, and I thank you very much. Well, you know, James, I mean, what an amazing story. Thank you. Thanks for that comment. That's really, that means a lot. Sometimes, as I said, giving you a sense of calm, a sense of information, a sense of control. That's all we need. In life, if we, if we do have a stent in there, it, it's frightening, it's scary. You know, you, you're, you're living with it. You're thinking, what's going to happen? We get good results. Your life will continue on normally. Sure, there are some things we need to tackle with medications and lifestyle changes, but life improves, life gets better don't be limited by the stent. You know, that's what I tell my patients. Don't be limited by the stent. What can I say? Amazing thank you to each and everyone who has watched this. Half a million people around the world. Thank you for being part of this channel. A like, share, subscribe, support the channel. We're hopefully giving you some useful information and trying to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. Feel free to provide your comments, your feedback, suggestions about future episodes that you would like to see us uh, have. And until the next video, bye for now.